Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Sarah Labrat, and today's video is going to be a fun little Q&A because I asked you guys both here on YouTube, on my YouTube community tab, and over on my Instagram account for questions that you guys wanted me to answer, and I got a bunch of responses that I'm very much looking forward to answer today. And so that is what we are going to do today. We're talking a little bit about writing, a little bit about publishing, and a little bit about some other random stuff. So if you go on to enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And now, without Without further ado, let's get into this Q&A. Name one piece of writing advice that you have changed your mind about or that you now understand better with experience. The fast draft, and I mean like the absolute zero draft that so many author tubers do and use. When I first started watching AuthorTube, I thought that the idea of a fast draft was so stupid because like, you need to think a lot about your first draft. And for some people, that just doesn't work. And I have learned that for myself, a fast draft might actually be a really good idea as a pantser. That way you can get through the concept phase and then get to making your story a lot better. I think that for plotters, this may not be as true, but personally for myself, being that I'm a pantser, I think that I hated on the really, really, really rough zero draft for far too long. And then I finally like tried it and gave it a shot and I was very very pleased with the flow of the story when I was able to do that. What gives you the motivation to complete a novel? Honestly wanting to see it done and often I start writing a story because it's a story that I really would personally want to read and I can't read it until it's completely written and that is a hugely motivating thing for me. What is your favorite Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie is definitely Tangled. I think that it doesn't quite get as much hype as it deserves. What makes you decide to shelve a novel or novel idea? This is a very tough question and I think that the best way that I can possibly answer this right now is I shelve novel ideas and novels and novel projects when I do not feel like I currently have the time or the right energy to spend on a project or if it just doesn't feel right with the stage of life that I'm at. And often when I shelve projects, I do wanna revisit them. However, I have not actually gotten back to a project yet, although I'm hoping to potentially later this year. Throughout your experience as a writer, what routines seem to help you focus on your novel and write to your full ability within a day? Like a year and a half ago at this point, I made a video called Building My Writing Schedule where I literally just took three days and tried to write to my creative capacity just to see how much creative energy I had within a day to expend on writing a novel. And that experience for me was so incredibly insightful because then I got to learn more about myself and my ability as a creative person with how I was functioning at that point in time with my creative projects. And basically what that experiment taught me was that I was not expending my full amount of creative energy on my novels every single day. And I have not been for a while again since that video. And I would like to remake that video again just to see where I'm at now. So basically not underestimating myself and really letting myself spend the time that I need with a story during any given day. And my other piece of advice with this would be to turn off your Wi-Fi and just cut out distractions. When I can tell that I'm getting distracted by my phone, and I have my phone sitting next to me, I will literally just like throw it on the couch or something so that it is out of my reach. Or I will time lapse myself writing or the sky if the sky is doing something interesting just so that I cannot be on my phone. But cutting out distractions has been incredibly, incredibly helpful in attempting to write to my fullest ability every single day. What is your favorite type of character to write? Heroic, humorous, villainous, morally ambiguous, etc. I would say that I am currently loving morally ambiguous and villainous characters. I think that there is something so interesting in the psyche of a villain that I want to dive more into and I'm trying to give myself the permission to do that but that might also hinge on just starting a new story where I get to write from the villain's perspective but we will just see what happens with that one. Do you ever struggle with having too many incongruent ideas for a single story? If so, how do you sort through them and choose the strongest ones that fit together? As a pantser, as we've already covered, I definitely have a lot of ideas for various stories and many, 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 many of those ideas do not end up being super applicable for the story when it first begins. And so one of the things that I've learned to do to help me kind of work around that is having multiple notes documents. So whenever I have an idea that I'm not 100% sure will work for the story, I put the idea in that notes document and how I think it could apply to the story, but I leave it there for a little bit to kind of think about it before I actually put it into the story. Because a lot of the time, 
time, it doesn't seem like those ideas actually get into the first draft for me. Or if they do, then I'll have to cut them out later. But even if I cut them out later, they go back in the notes document so that I never lose them. And I have found that I've used some of those ideas that I've had for a certain story that I've moved to a notes document have either gone into a sequel for the story that I was working on or have gone towards a different story where it actually fits better. So yes, I definitely struggle with this. And then as far as choosing the strongest ones that fit together, I think that that is just writing the story and learning what the story itself needs and what works best for that story. I really wish that there was an easier answer for that, but I think it's more of a trial and error thing than anything else. When you're home most of the day, how do you know what kinds of clips to vlog? I thought this was a very fun question because a lot of the questions that I was getting were very writing focused, but I really wanted to answer this one because I do work from home. I do spend a lot of time in my apartment and I would say that my best answer is I pretty much just vlog when I'm actually doing things in my apartment, like when I'm writing or when I'm making food or whatever I want to include in the video. If I'm just sitting on the couch watching YouTube videos, I don't vlog it. If I'm working, I often don't vlog it unless it's like a very brief time lapse that's gonna be added in or something. But I try to make it as interesting as possible because again, social media is a highlight reel. Vlogs are a highlight reel oftentimes. And it cuts out a lot of the day-to-day -day monotony. And so I just try to vlog things that I would find interesting in a video and that's what I try to include. Now that you have written in the high fantasy genre, are there any other genres that you enjoy that you would one day be interested writing in? This is a great question. I feel like I mostly read fantasy and science fiction, which are two genres that I also write in, but I have been reading more and more romance books recently because they're so easy to read and you just get through them so quickly and they're very enjoyable and very easy. And so I'm kind of wondering if at some point in the future I will end up trying my hand at a romance, but I would want it to be romance in fantasy or romance in science fiction. But again, that is something that only time can tell. How did you know you wanted to be a writer? I have known for a very long time. I loved reading as a kid. I loved writing stories as a kid and I would like dictate stories to my mom to type them for me. And then she would add coloring book clip art that she found online. And I would call those my books and then I would get to color in the clip art pieces. And I think it's just been such a non-negotiable thing for me for such a long time. Because when I was younger, art and writing just were natural and I just have never not written or created art. And I I think I'm very, very lucky considering how young I was to find something that I want to do for the rest of my life in whatever capacity I'm able to. So I've known for a very long time. I've written since I was six. My earliest recorded work is from when I was six and I made a whole video about it where I reread the We'll call it a creative masterpiece that was that book. I believe it was called the My Unicorn Book, but that's just something that I've known for a really long time and everybody figures it out differently. But for me, it was very much a, this is something that I really wanted to do for a long time and I consider myself to be very lucky that I've known that. This question tag teams off the last one and this is, how long have you been writing and do you have any tips for teen writers? Like I said, I've probably been writing since I was about six, if not, before then, but I believe my earliest recorded thing that I tried writing was about six years old. And my tips for teen writers or writers that are just starting out is to just keep going. You will figure out what you like and what you don't like as you write. It is a very tough process to write a book, but it is very rewarding when you finish. I would also suggest celebrating your small wins and rewarding yourself along the way because it is all about the journey and not about the destination. As nice as it would be to have a finished product, it takes so long to get there that I think you really need to celebrate the journey and the process itself to really get the full enjoyment out of writing a book. Going a little non-writing related here, what's been your favorite little adventure you've gone on since moving to Utah? Great question and as soon as I saw this one I got nervous to answer it because I don't know. I really 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 wish I had like a good answer but I also kind of love that I don't because I've enjoyed so many of the adventures that I've gone on. I don't think I have one that stands out above the rest. I go hiking multiple times a week and I've seen some really, really cool things. Something that I've definitely learned about myself though is that I love hikes that get me to water destinations or that follow water. And so I've been doing hikes that go next to rivers and I've been hiking up to waterfalls and hiking up to alpine lakes and those have by far been my favorite. There's something so serene and peaceful about a body of water and a mountain and when you put them together, 
ooh, it is a fun experience. I've seen several alpine lakes now and I know that you can't build next to them because they're in national forests, but that is the absolute dream is to have a house in the mountains on a lake. Do you sometimes get surprised by little details that pop up when you're writing? Absolutely. It still shocks me sometimes how I'm writing and something will just automatically fall into place. And I always get so excited when that happens or when I go back and reread what I've written and realize that before I got to a plot point, I was already foreshadowing because apparently something in my brain knew that something was gonna happen along those lines or it was just a pure coincidence and that's just how it worked out. But there's something so cool about finding the happy little accidents as Bob Ross would say. So yes, I am always thrilled when I find those like surprising little beneficial details in my story. What is your favorite bookstore? I think that my favorite bookstore is gonna have to go to the Waterstones in Edinburgh. There is something so magical about Scotland in general. And then to be in this bookstore that has a cafe on their second level with an area for the cafe with a massive bay window. And then through that bay window is just this absolutely stunning view of the hill that leads up to the Edinburgh Castle and to the Edinburgh Castle sitting on top. And I could sit in that cafe for days and I would love to be able to at some point. I have only been in Edinburgh a couple of times and each for like three days, so nowhere near long enough. The absolute dream would be able to spend a couple weeks in Scotland so that I could spend some very, very good quality time writing with that view. What books are your all-time favorites and which have motivated you in your writing journey? Ooh, this is a tough question. Okay. I think that two series come to my mind right away as being like my all time favorites. And I think that that would probably have to be the middle grade book series called The Dragon Slippers, which is a trilogy by Jessica Day George that was very fundamental in my development as a writer and wanting to write about dragons. And the second series would probably be the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass. I think that one probably goes without saying. I love that series so much. And I probably also read that series during a very very impactful moment in my life where it really got to me and I was so freaking in love with the characters and with the story. So those are probably my two favorite series. And then if we wanna throw in a nonfiction book in there, Never Split the Difference is a book on negotiating by Chris Voss that I highly recommend. If you are at all interested, I will leave all of those books linked down in the description box below. And as far as the books go that have impacted my writing journey, I made a whole video about the books that have influenced my writing, so feel free to check that out after this. That will also be linked down in the description box below. Something that I absolutely adored from these questions is that completely unprompted, somebody asked me what my favorite character from the Throne of Glass series was and who my favorite character from the Akatar series was. So I also got nervous when I saw this question because I don't want to choose. But let's start with Throne of Glass. I love Selena Sardothian, and I guess I'm kind of stretching this into three characters because I'm also going to throw Manon Blackbeak in there and Abraxos. Abraxos has so much character and of course it's a dragon so I have to throw that in there. And then as far as the A Court of Thorns and Roses series goes, I will probably, oh gosh, okay, this answer changes depending on which book I'm answering or thinking about. Oh, okay, um, first book, the Surreal. And then for the second and third books, probably Azrael and Helion. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. But there are so many good characters and such huge casts of characters in these books that it is hard to pick just one. When you write your drafts, do you write in single spaced or double? I write in 1.15 <laughs> spacing because that is what Word automatically goes to and I guess I'm just too lazy to change it. Since you mentioned you're a pantser, what do you think is the best benefit and hindrance of writing that way for you? Okay, um, the best thing about being a pantser is getting to enjoy the story as it flows out of my brain. There's something that's so much fun about just getting to experience the story for the first time as you're writing it that I do not feel when I've attempted to outline in the past. I am sure that there are plenty of pantsers out there that would disagree with me on this, but that is one of my favorite things about being a pantser. The biggest hindrance, however, I think is writer's block and getting to a point in the story where you don't know what happens next. Because often while I'm pantsing, I know where the story starts 
eh, roughly, we'll say roughly, but I definitely know where the story is going to end. And getting from point A to point B is the hardest part about being a pantser because you don't know what happens. <laughs> That's where being a plotter would be really freaking nice, but I am not there yet and I don't know if I ever will be. And there's also nothing wrong with being a plotter or a pantser, but there are definitely pros and cons of being either. A lot of people asked me whether I wanted to self-publish or traditional publish. So I think that my project DE is best suited for traditional publishing. And I'm still quite hopeful that that will be the first book that I publish, but again, Time will tell, we will see what happens. However, I do not think that traditional publishing is any more legitimate than self-publishing, and I might be open to self-publishing in the future, but it kind of just depends on what I feel like is best for each story that I may put out. When do you hope to be published by? Ooh, this is not a fun question for me. Um, I thought that I was gonna start the publishing process by looking for an agent before the end of 2019. It is now August of 2021, and I still have not started seeking an agent. And while I think that this was definitely the right decision, that date of wanting to look for an agent just keeps getting pushed back further and further because granted the story needs more help, but because that keeps happening, this is kind of hard to put a date on. I first wanted to be published before I'm 25. I am now 24. The odds of being published within less than a year is very, very, very unlikely. I'm just gonna say it's not gonna happen, especially if I wanna go the traditional route for this novel. But I have been throwing around the idea with myself that I would like to get Project DE ready to start seeking an agent before its six year anniversary in July of 2022. That is my current thought process. That is my current goal. We will see what happens at the end of draft four, which I am currently working on. And hopefully that will provide me a little bit of clarity with how many more iterations of this book I'm going to need to write before I can start looking for an agent. Would you like to publish a book a year, multiple per year, or once every few years? In a perfect world, I would be putting out multiple books a year because as a reader, I hate waiting an entire year or longer to get another book from my favorite authors. Or if it's a series and you have to go several years between the books, that's the worst and I really do not want to do that to my future readers. However, that will probably just depend on the phase of life that I'm in and what else I have going on. If I am a full-time writer, that could look very different than if I was working a very full-time job. So I think that that very much just depends. So I'm going to say I think the most sustainable publishing plan long-term for me, as my current brain thinks, would be about a book a year. However, in an ideal world, I would put out more than one book a year and probably do one every like six months. That sounds very stressful to me right now, but again, in a perfect world, I think that'd be awesome. Are you interested in being a full-time author one day? Honestly, that's the dream. I would love to get to a point where that is a possibility. Again, it will just depend on the phase of life that I'm in, but I am trying to be very creative right now so that I have a little bit of a backlog of work so that when I start publishing, hopefully it will be a little bit easier to keep up with the deadlines because I'll already have projects that have been started and rough drafts completed of. But yeah, that would be a dream to be a full-time author. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm hoping to do a couple writing experiments to kind of start practicing towards that, hopefully hopefully, <laughs> to kind of see if I can write at the pace that I would need to write at in order to do something like that, like write full time or put out multiple books a year, but hopefully those writing experiments will actually happen soon. Would you rather write a New York Times bestseller or an award-winning novel? I don't really know. I love the idea of having number one New York Times bestselling author printed on every single one of the books that I ever put out. That is something that seems and feels incredibly powerful. So I think that's gonna have to be my answer. I would love to be an award-winning author too, but I think right now the concept of being a New York Times bestseller is very intriguing. So that's the answer for that one. When I filmed this video, I ended up filming for about two hours answering y'all's questions and I decided to not make that one video and so I'm splitting this Q&A into two parts. The next video will be out on Monday because for the time being, I'm dropping down from 
from two times a week to just posting once a week on Mondays to bring you guys some more really fun videos while also not stressing myself out as much. And so if you're not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get updated when that is posted. I hope that this video was helpful in answering some of y'all's questions today. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that you liked my video and that someone else might too. If I did not answer your question and you would like to leave a question for a future Q&A, feel free to drop a question in the comment section down below and I will keep it in mind for the next time I make a Q&A video. That being said, I'm Sarah Labrat. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank you.